Good morning, church. Good morning. Every one of them days you thought would never come. Sometimes those happen, don't they? You know, I thought I had this week planned out and everything was going so perfectly up until last Tuesday. And then the wheels of the bus fell off and we were scrambled just to get to the week. But we've been on a journey of Advent this year called the Christmas Dilemma. <laughs> And when I first started this series, I thought, boy, that seems like an, oxy, an oxymoron, a, a word that doesn't make sense to, to unite with Christmas. But as, I hope for you, as we've taken this journey, we found, found out that it's very applicable, isn't it? Each of us in our journey, in, in our relationship with Christ, and each of us in our journey of faith, um, face challenges, face, face opportunity in which Fear and anxiety, belief and 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 um, the ability to just follow become overwhelming. And then in this season of Advent, as we look forward to the birth of the Messiah, I think it's good for us to reflect on that. To look inwardly and, 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 and to, to determine amongst ourselves and in our own hearts and minds, what is it that I must lay before the cross? So that when I come and receive my Savior, I can serve Him with all my heart and my soul and my mind. As I, as I looked at the, 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 the innkeeper's dilemma this week, it was the dilemma of belief. The challenge of, of understanding, is this really possible? Is God really doing this? And when you watch the video this morning and you hear the, the, the innkeeper's uh, story, Think about your journey in, in life with Christ and your journey in, in the world. See if there's any of those things that pop up into your life. Speaking of miracles, there's a certain couple that's short of late tonight. <coughs> can't seem to shake the impression they made on me. The girl was more fatigued than a woman should be. <clears throat> All she wanted was just a place to rest. But I had nothing. The husband pleading with such desperation. What kind of businessman would take pause with that? Huh? What could I do? Bethlehem was packed. <laughs> no fault of my own. And that's where the book would have closed on the matter had it not been for my dear, dear, sweet wife. The, the jab in the ribs from her finger telling me I might want to rethink my position on things. I very clearly knew my options. A, I could find them a place to sleep. Or B, I could find myself a place to sleep. <laughs> Seriously, my wife, Estelle, had seen something that I had completely missed. The girl, she was pregnant. There was no way I was going to leave her out in the cold night. But the barn, well, he was all ahead. We were grateful. There's something different about them. Something. It's a quirky word. A word we simply don't use anymore. But holy. It's really the only word that fits. They say the baby that he's the Messiah. The one who's gonna, gonna change everything. Could he really be the one that we've been waiting for after all these years? <coughs> All my life, disbelief has uh, <laughs> paralyzed me, I suppose you could say. But this, this has given me a chance to believe. <coughs> Bethlehem will be waking up soon. People come want food in their stomach. They're going to be registered for the census. <coughs> All these people in their own little worlds. No one knowing that a Savior has entered the world. Out of all the places on earth, God chose, God chose, God chose my place to bring hope into the world. I'm certainly not a 
very worthy man, but I am a grateful one. And still, I've never seen that woman happy in years. As for me, there will always be things to buy and sell. But this, all of this, this is giving me a new kind of heart. A heart that believes. Oh, what a holy night. <coughs> the dilemma that the innkeeper was facing was understanding that God could choose an ordinary person and use them for an ordinary instant. Just like serving pancakes to 120 strangers. Just like feeding the homeless. I was, I was blessed on Friday afternoon about 4 o'clock to make uh, mashed potatoes with Phyllis. And we're down there just whipping up them potatoes and getting them ready. And, and I thought, you know, what a wonderful blessing it is for me to stand with a woman who served the Lord her whole life and hear her stories of love and hear her compassion for strangers. You see, in the book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 8, we understand the reason for the coming of the Messiah. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Amen? The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the work of the devil. It's a very profound statement. The Messiah has come to rectify the world, amen? The Messiah has come to take us out of darkness and into the light, to forgive our sins and, and offer a path of righteousness. The challenge is, do we pick up the Messiah when we want to and carry him with us always, or do we hide him away in our mind? when something else is going on. I had a very long day yesterday. At 8 o'clock, they hand me a prescription for, for a painkiller for Jenny. At 8 o'clock at night. Anybody know that many pharmacies open at 8 o'clock at night? I'd been there since 9 o'clock in the morning. We could have put that in a better order. So I took my wife to a CVS pharmacy that was open 24 hours, and we sat for an hour and waited for a prescription to kill the pain. That's an oxymoron. <laughs> Sitting in your car for an hour waiting for a prescription to kill the pain. By the time I left there, I was at my wit's end. The fuse had burnt. The firecracker had went off. The devil was well at work within my mind. There wasn't a soul in the world I could be happy with. Yet I could look to my right and see my wife rising in pain. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has come and has been sinful from the beginning. Amen? <coughs> and it is the word of the devil that gave us the reason for Jesus Christ. I have to stand on that promise that Christ is in me and the devil is fleeing. And while he flees, he plans on wreaking as much havoc as he can. And I've got to be able to withstand that storm. Amen? Jesus came to fix us so that we can have a blessing tree. So that we can feed 120 people. So that we can love the homeless. So that we can do things for those who are stuck in their home and haven't had a visit in forever. Jesus came to make you and I holy. He came already holy. He took the form of a baby in a manger so that we could be like him. And the world would change. And the world would be void of the death trying to destroy it. That's the reason we're here. The blessings come from the baby. In Luke 2, we begin with verse 1. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken 
of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place when Panerius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, where he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest rooms available for them in the inn. Imagine the innkeeper figuring out that the people that he'd sent to the barn were Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, the Messiah. Anybody want a mulligan on that one? You know what a mulligan is? It's how we cheat and golf. We pick up the ball and we hit out of bounds and say, you get a free a do -over. The poor, the poor innkeeper was just doing his job. And, and if you ever met somebody and said, boy, I wish I knew who, who they were before I said what I said. Amen. 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 That's 100% participation, hands in the air. <laughs> yes. Right. This is the poor, the poor innkeeper's dilemma. Oh, my goodness, I just put Jesus in the barn. I could have kicked out Fred. He's just sleeping on a hangover up there. I could have put Jesus in the nicest room. If only I had known who he was. If only it wasn't, I wasn't afraid to accept him as my Lord and Savior. If only I could have known. You see, we have, we have a great perspective, unlike the innkeepers. We know, amen? We're here singing the songs of the season and praising the Lord for the things He's doing in our life because the baby has come and saved our souls. Amen. We know. The question is, what do we do with it? The first blessing was Jesus. Here's the second. In Galatians 4, verse 5, But when the set time had fully come, God sent His Son, Born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive an adoption to sonship. Because you are his children, God sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts. The Spirit who calls out Abba and Father. So that we are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you an heir into his kingdom. Because that baby came, everything's different in our life. Amen? The blessing is here and it's come. And we've got to do something with it. We are, brothers and sisters, we are how the world finds the baby. We are how the world sees Jesus Christ in our lives and in our love and in how we treat each other. That's the hardest part of life, isn't it? Loving one another and treating each other in that fashion. Someone, the poor lady at the pharmacy, put the wrong number in the safe to get the narcotic out, and instead of a 20-minute break, it was a 60-minute break. I didn't have a lot of weight. I didn't have a lot of patience then. My wife was hurting. Just give me the key. I'll get it myself. <laughs> but she doesn't see Jesus Christ at that moment. She sees another man dealing with everyday life and being just as miserable as the one before him <coughs> and probably the one after him. Those are the things we have to overcome. Those are the things that when we come to the manger on Christmas Eve, we leave here. If we fail to leave it here, it's with us for a whole other year. It's with us until he goes to the cross and dies for our sins. The second blessing, the second blessing that Christ is offering us is a change, a transformation. Not as slaves, but as citizens of the <coughs> most high God. Children available to call him Father. Romans 8. 14 says the same thing. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear. Rather, the Spirit you receive 
brought your adoption to sonship. So that you might cry, Abba, or Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. And if we are God's children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Indeed, if we share in His sufferings in order that we may also share in His glory. The challenge in belief at Christmas is saying, I believe. I believe without a doubt, with all my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. And because I believe, I know that baby came for me. Amen? And I'm, I'm not a stranger to that baby. That's my Lord. That's my, my, my Father. The question is, we know Jesus is holy. How do we become holy? How do people see that difference in us, not at one pancake dinner, but every time they see us? How does, how does the church become a place where wherever you are in your walk of life, when you enter the building, you find God. You find holiness. You find love. You find righteousness. You find compassion and caring for one another. Are we holy with one another? Is our belief in the Messiah strong enough and visible to the world around us? Those are the questions we have to answer in our Christmas dilemma. I failed yesterday. And, and I can, I, I got enough reasons to say why I failed, but I still failed, amen? I still let my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ down by becoming human and falling back on my weaknesses instead of falling on my knees. Wouldn't it have been a much better sight if I fell on my knees in a CVS pharmacy at 9 o'clock at night and said, Lord, give that woman the combination to that state and bless her so I can go home. Instead of being a curmudgeon, a grump, a mean man. They might have saw Jesus. And I might not be confessing my shortcomings today. But brothers and sisters, in this journey of faith, belief is real. In this journey of faith, failure is real. Go back to the, my focus verse in 1 John. The one who does what is sinful is of the devil because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. And the reason that Christ Jesus came was to destroy the work of the devil. Lord Jesus, destroy the devil in me. Amen? Let that be our prayer tonight when our heads hit the pillow. Cast him out, Father, so that I might be like you. I might love my brother and sister. I might love the little lady in the back room who wears black and gold all the time. See, he's healed me on that. He's healed me on that. And He'll heal us on all that sin in our life. Amen? But until we give it to Him, it's here. Until we open up our hearts and say, where, how does the world see me? We, we, we keep it. The old time. I mean, the, the devil's last stand is you and I. He knows Jesus is coming back. And when Jesus comes back and walks amongst the earth, the earth is His. Amen? And when the earth is Jesus, is and Jesus has claimed it, and God now lives on the earth and claims it as his, his dwelling place, where Satan, he gone. He's gone. Amen. This baby that we're celebrating in this season came for you and me so that we could be different. So that we would be the instruments of change. In this season of Christmas dilemmas within us, make sure we take the time to say, I'm sorry. To take the time to love sincerely. And be honest with ourselves. Look in the mirror and say, Is that? 
guy rule? Or is he an instrument? <coughs> Let us pray. Precious and holy God, we are broken. We are flawed. We are sinful. But in this season of great anticipation, in this season of act, you are coming to free us from the chains of slavery. So may we be the light in the world. May we cast our sin at your feet. For you are our God, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Let's close our worship this morning by standing <coughs> to sing our closing hymn, O Come All You